A state of emergency has been declared in Egypt overnight. Security forces moved in to clear two camps housing protesters who are loyal to the former president, Mohamed Morsi. There's been dispute over the death toll, but the health ministry there puts it at 149. Joining me now is Otago University international relations expert Robert Patman. Uh, good morning, Professor. Thank you for joining us this morning. Oh, good morning, Rachel. Pleasure. What, what's behind this escalation in Egypt overnight, and, and at who's ordering it? Well, the military under General Sisi uh, displaced uh, Mr Morsi, President Morsi from power, the democratically elected president, in early July and appointed an interim government which included uh, military figures as well as, well as liberal figures and secular leaders. But the whole thing seems to be unravelling. In the period since the early July, we've had a series of violent clashes and resulting well over 100 deaths. And then in the last 24 hours, we've had this situation where the military became increasingly frustrated. The Egyptian military became increasingly frustrated by Morsi supporters who effectively had, had established two protest camps in, in Cairo and they used force to clear them. And, the, and what's happened has been absolute carnage. The, 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 in the early indications are that the figures being cited are much worse than 100 or so deaths and many and possibly thousands of people injured. It's worth remembering too that this was a democratically elected government as well that was um, essentially oh, I, removed yeah. from power. So yeah. what's happening there now? Is this bringing the country any closer to democracy or is it going the other no. way and heading towards civil war? No, there's some ominous developments now, Rachel. Uh, Mohammed El Baraday, uh, former senior official of the International Atomic Energy Agency, and seen by many Egyptians as a reformist liberal. He was one of the figures who backed the military takeover on an interim basis. But it's quite clear the military have long-term ambitions to remain at the centre of Egyptian politics. He has resigned in the last 24 hours to protest against the repression at the two camps with uh, uh, Morsi supporters. And so what we're seeing now, I think, is a polarisation of the situation a showdown between the Muslim Brotherhood and its supporters with violence extending throughout the country, out, fanning out of Cairo and, and the military regime. Unfortunately, uh, all those millions of Egyptians who hoped, hoped for a secular, tolerant Egypt and a transition to liberal democracy, they're getting squeezed. And I think the prospect of liberal democracy is rapidly waning. And what's intriguing too, perhaps, is just across the border, of course, in Israel, uh, we have the Israelis and the Palestinians talking about entering into peace talks again. And Egypt, mm. historically, has been one of Israel's few Arab friends in that region, hasn't it? Yes, it, it, it's true. Um, and and it, I think it's fair to say Israel has been nervous about the situation in Egypt since the fall of Mubarak, who had been... A, a, a partner of Israel. Uh, they still have a, a Egypt. Still remains the only, one of the few countries in the Arab world which has a peace treaty with Israel. But as turbulence develops in Egypt, and Egypt is an absolutely crucial country in the Arab world, probably the most crucial. Then I suppose uh, that makes the things all the more unpredictable uh, for Israel from a geopolitical point of view. And it'll be interesting to see whether this gives Israel an additional incentive to push on with the talks with the Palestinians. But I'm afraid that the prospects for a breakthrough at the moment between the Palestinians and the Israelis does not look particularly good. No, indeed. Professor Robert Patman from Otago University, appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you.